This lesson is about different operations on functions. In all the basic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, that work on real numbers also apply to functions as well. And that's the basic idea here, and it's not too much of a stretch to imagine. So let's look at some examples. So let's say we have one function, f of x equals x squared plus 1, and another function, g of x equals 3x plus 5. So the first operation on functions that we have is the function f plus g of x, which really is just another way of notating um, f of x plus g of x. So this is just a new notation to represent, you know, the operation that we're going to do, which is to add these two functions together, which is pretty straightforward. We just take f of x, which is x squared plus 1, add it to g of x, which is 3x plus 5, and simplify as much as we can. So I've got some like terms here. This would be x squared plus 3x plus 6 fairly straightforward. Uh, likewise, the function f minus g of x is simply evaluated by doing f of x minus g of x. And in this case, we would take x squared minus 1, oh, x squared plus 1, minus 3x plus 5, but notice I'm subtracting the entire function 3x plus 5, and so um, this negative would distribute to both terms inside here. So this is actually going to be evaluated as like x squared plus 1 minus 3x minus 5. Okay, just be careful on that uh, distribution. So the final answer would be x squared minus 3x, and then 1 minus 5 would combine to negative 4. No. Next, if we have f times g of x, and again, the way we evaluate this is just to take f of x multiplied by the function g of x. So in order to work this out, I would be doing x squared plus 1 times 3x plus 5. And to work this through, I would need to FOIL. So it looks like I would have 3x cubed plus 5x squared plus 3x and plus 5. Doesn't look like I have any more like terms, so that's as simple as it's going to get. Next, let's look at uh, f divide g of x, which, as you probably have guessed already, we're just taking f of x divided by g of x. So this would look like x squared plus 1 over 3x plus 5. And there's nothing really to simplify there, so that's our final answer. Okay, let's look at evaluating. So I'm going to take the same f of x and g of x and pull the function that we came up with, the sum of those. And the first thing I'm going to do with that is I'm going to evaluate that sum, the function sum, at negative 1. So I would literally be doing negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1 plus 6. So this would be 1 minus 3 plus 6. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 6 would be 4. Now, if I did this in another way, by evaluating each function separately first and then combining the result, I should get the same answer. So let's see what happens. So f of negative 1 would be uh, negative 1 squared plus 1. And I think I'll put that in brackets just to you know, show that that's my f. And then I'm going to do plus 
g of negative 1, so 3 times negative 1 plus 5. And let's see what happens. So this would be 1 plus 1, which is 2. This would be negative 3 plus 5, which is also 2. And the result is 4. So you can do these in either way and get the same answer. Um, it's just at times there's an advantage going one way versus another. Like, for instance, in this next example, where I want to evaluate based off of uh, a graph. So, for instance, I want f plus g evaluated at 0. Now, the blue function is f of x, and the red function I'm calling my g of x. So, the thing is, um, I can, I don't know what these functions are individually, uh, so I can't get the sum function and then evaluate the sum function, but I could split this up into just f evaluated at 0 plus g evaluated at 0. So that's going to be, so f evaluated at 0, here's x equals 0, and f at that point is negative 3. So this is negative 3. g evaluated at 0 is down here at negative 6. So I need to add together negative 3 plus negative 6. The result there is negative 9. Okay, let's try another one like that. So let's try f minus g evaluated at negative 2. So at negative 2, uh, f of x is here and g of x is down here. So f of x is at positive 1, g of x is at negative 8. So essentially what I want to do is um, take 1 minus, oops, don't know why I wrote a negative, 1 minus negative 8. And that's going to be evaluating to positive 9. So that's how these types of functions will all work out. So another example, f times g evaluated at 3. Uh, at 3, f is up here at 6, and g is down here at negative 3. So it's going to be 6 times negative 3 or negative 18. And lastly, f divide g of x at 1. So at 1, f of x is here at negative 2, and g of x is at negative 5. So it's going to be negative 2 over negative 5, which would be 2 fifths. And that's how all of these would work out. The only thing you'd ever have to worry about is, let's say if I wanted to do f over g evaluated at 6. Well, the issue here is that um, f, well, is way off my chart, but that's okay, it doesn't really matter, because g here is at 0. So whatever f is at, I'll just put a in just because I don't know what it is, I would have division by 0. So that's kind of the only restriction on any of these, is you can't have the function in your denominator equaling 0, because you wouldn't be able to evaluate it. OK. Let's talk about function composition. Function composition is a special function operation that allows us to evaluate a function at another function. This becomes especially useful throughout the study of calculus. It's denoted f with a little open circle, then g of x. And we read it f of g of x. It is sometimes mistaken uh, for students at first as multiplication, thinking that the little circle is trying to indicate multiplication. But the thing is, we don't indicate multiplication of functions in this way. 
if we were going to indicate multiplication of functions, we would only put f and g next to each other and no operation in between because of the confusion that could happen with function composition. Let's look at some examples. Suppose we have f of x is defined by 3x minus 2 and g of x defined by x squared minus 5. Let's evaluate f of negative 1. Now, evaluating a function at a point, uh, x equals negative 1 for instance, is function composition in its simplest form. What we're essentially doing is composing a function with another function which just happens to be a constant and that is the simplest form of function composition. So if you can grasp the concept starting here, we can build from there and it won't seem so difficult. Or it won't seem so confusing, I should say. So evaluating f at negative 1, we would take all our x's and replace them with negative 1 and reduce it down to its simplest form. So this would be negative 3 minus 2 so that we get negative 5. And that is function composition in its simplest form. Here's another example. g of 2. To evaluate g of 2, we just put 2 in for x. So we would have 2 to the second power minus 5, which would be 4 minus 5, or negative 1. So g composed with the constant function 2 evaluates to negative 1. All right, let's make it a little bit more difficult. Let's say we want to compose g with a, fun a, a constant function a. So we don't know what a is, but we're going to evaluate it at that particular point. So what we do is whatever we replace x with in this particular set of parentheses, we do the same on the other side of the equation. So effectively, I'm going to replace the x in my square with an a and simplify as much as possible. So when you're doing function composition, you are going to rarely end up with a single number as an answer. And that's OK. Uh, if you compose two functions, it's more likely that you end up with a resulting function in the end rather than a resulting uh, value. So a squared minus 5 is as simple as I can write that, and so I'm all done. Let's evaluate f at m plus 1. So again, just slightly more complex than what we were doing. So f evaluated at m plus 1, what's happening here is my x's have been replaced with m plus 1. So on the other side of the equation, I'm going to replace all my x's with m plus 1. And once I do that, I will now go through and simplify as much as possible. So this would be 3m plus 3 after distributing or 3m plus 1. Okay. Now, let's suppose we want to evaluate f at the function a squared minus 5. So the idea here is, you know, we have the function f of x. Oops, I meant to do that in blue f of x is equal to, oh, bring it back up here so you can see it, 3 times x minus 2. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm replacing x with a squared minus 5. So I would be doing 3 times that which I'm replacing 
I'm replacing my x with. So I'm replacing it with the a squared minus 5. And now all I do is simplify. So I express this as 3a squared minus 15 minus 2, for instance. And then 3a squared minus 17 is about as far as I can simplify it. Notice it doesn't result in a single number, and that's OK. Like I mentioned before, when you are doing function composition, you very rarely will end up with uh, a number in the end. OK, but we haven't really seen function composition uh, using the notation of function composition. These are all just kind of special cases of it. So let's take a look at an example that really is function composition using the notation. So I'm asked to evaluate f at g of x. So what I'm going to do, so in green, I'm going to put my g of x. So f is 3 times my replacement function minus 2. And g of x, oh, let, me, let me write it back over here just in case you can't, don't have it written down anymore. So g of x was x squared minus 2. And let me just double check that since I have to scroll up to see it. x squared minus 5, good thing I checked. All right, so g of x is x squared minus 5. Well, that's meant to erase that. OK. Now, what I'm going to do is the x that was in the function f of x, I'm going to replace that with g of x. So I'm evaluating the function f of x at g of x. So what I'm, what's going to end up here is I'm going to have 3 times the quantity x squared minus 5. So when I simplify, I could distribute the 3 and have 3x squared minus 15 minus 2. And that would equal 3x squared minus 17. If you'll notice, it's very similar to the problem above. Uh, I purposefully chose to evaluate you know, f of x at a squared minus 5, which is basically the same function as g of x was to begin with. So the result here is 3x squared minus 17. OK, let's try one last example. And what I want to show in this example is the order of the composition makes a difference. So I'm evaluating the function g at f of x, whereas in the last example, I evaluated f at g of x. So the function g of x is whatever I'm plugging in squared minus 5. Well, the thing that I'm plugging in for my x is f of x. So I'm going to take f of x and square it and then subtract 5. Well, f of x I know to be 3x minus 2. And that gives me something I can work with. So, oh, scroll too far there. There we are. I simplify this as much as possible. In this case, there's going to be a little bit more simplification than the last example because my square has a function in it now. But I would just FOIL out. So 9x squared minus, let's see, 2 times 3x would be 6x times negative 2 would be negative 12x. So minus 12x plus 4 minus 5 or 9x squared minus 12x minus 1. Uh, regular notation, I'm going to use the functions x, 8x minus 1, 3x plus 4, but I'm going to use this notation. 
So all this means is to take the function f and evaluate it at the function g of x. So in this case, I'm going to evaluate f at 3x plus 4. So I'm just replacing g of x with 3x plus 4. And now I'm going to plug 3x plus 4 into the 8x minus 1. So 8 times 3x plus 4 minus 1. This gives me 24x plus 32 minus 1, 24x plus 31. Likewise, g composed f of x would be g evaluated at f of x. And I'm just going to replace f of x here with uh, its definition, which is 8x minus 1. And if I plug the 8x minus 1 into g of x, it's 3 times 8x minus 1 plus 4, which is 24x minus 3 plus 4, which is 24x uh, plus 1. So uh, notice these two functions are not equal to one another. Um, it's very uncommon that you come up with two functions that actually are the same through composition.